Well, hello, and welcome back to another podcast episode with Brittany Bundles. You are listening to the Brittany Bundles podcast, where we empower people through entrepreneurship. And today, what I'd like to talk about is a, it was a meme that I saw on Facebook and the picture on the meme was really interesting to me. And it read, sometimes holding on does more damage than letting go. And it had a hand with the rope and it had this hand balled up, you know, just uh, quenching or, or straining to keep the rope in, in its hands. And the rope in return was causing the wrist to bleed because the rope was tied around the wrist and, you know, they were pulling it. And the more that they pulled, it was causing the wrist to bleed, like I mentioned. And then they had another picture right above that that had a free hand. They let it go and their wrist was able to heal. And so I started thinking about that. You know, I like to, to sometimes, you know, just sit around and, and think about life in general. Um, and that saying is so, so true. And it holds so much value, that concept right there, to not just our personal lives or personal relationships, which can affect our productivity and the creativity associated with becoming the best entrepreneur that we can be, but it also can affect our businesses and it also can affect our, even if you go to a nine to five, it can affect uh, who you are as a person based on what you're allowing to continue to have a hold on you. And so today what I want to talk about is I want to talk about identifying some of the reasons why we are holding on and some of the things that we are holding on to that are prohibiting us or keeping us from becoming the best entrepreneur, the best person that we can actually be. So like always, I do encourage you to share this podcast. Sharing the podcast not only helps me, it not only helps the podcast, but it also helps other entrepreneurs out there needing this information to actually get the word. Not just that, but it also helps promote and showcase the different entrepreneurs that have been on this podcast to share their journey and also their business. So this is a community. Uh, the more we share, the more it grows. So be sure to go ahead and share this episode. You can share it on social media, share the link on your Facebook, share the link via email, text message. Um, you can also turn on the podcast while you're in the car with a family member or friend. I truly appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and give you a moment to share the podcast. Also, if you are interested in supporting the podcast, there is an option where you can donate. It is on the Anchor platform. So if you download the Anchor app, that's A-N-C-H-O-R, type in Brittany Bundles Podcast or the Brittany Bundles Podcast, excuse me, you'll be able to listen to all of my podcasts there. And also you'll be able to donate. Um, donating just helps the podcast continue to grow. It gives us more revenue to expand and do more things. And I'm definitely wanting to expand this podcast even more this year. So be sure to donate if you can. I truly appreciate it. Also, if you don't have the Anchor app, there is another way that you can donate by going to my website, which is www.badchickhair.com. That is bad, B-A-B-C-H-I-C-K, hair, H-A-I-R.com. Uh, there is a tip option as a checkout feature on my website. So if you do want to leave a tip, you can write in a note and say it's for the podcast. I will get it and apply it directly to uh, that area of my business. So I do appreciate it again. I'm going to go ahead and give you a brief moment to share the podcast and I'll be right back with you all. All right. All right. So we are back and today we're talking about a quote that I saw on Facebook that is very, very true. And that I felt the need to create a whole episode in regards to that quote again is sometimes holding on does more damage than letting go. And so the first thing that I want to talk about is identifying why you're holding on. Now, let me say this too. When I say holding on, I'm not just referring to relationships. I'm referring to past failures, uh, doubt, um, 
unhealthy habits. Toxic relationships are included in this as well. Anything that we're holding on to that we don't want to let go of because of fear or because of love or because of comfortability that is hurting us in the long run is something that we need to consider and actually think it over to make sure that we're doing the best that we possibly can to be as productive as we can, like I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast. I know for me, I am trying every day to become a better person. I don't just want to be a better entrepreneur. I'm not just striving to be a better um, team player, so to speak. I'm, I'm striving to be an all-around better person. I want to make sure that I am fulfilling the person that God created me to be. I want to make sure that I'm fulfilling the purpose that God created for me. And so in order to do that, my goal every day is to become better. And in order to become better, it, it comes with challenges. And we have to identify and stop and look and see what we're doing and why we're doing what we're doing. And so even this week, you know, I have different things lined up to talk to different people in regards to just becoming better, you know, and that journey is a continuous journey, right? No one just reaches the cap of betterment, you know, until your time is up on this earth. And so because of that, we all have an opportunity and I believe truly an obligation to ourselves and those around us and to God to make sure that we are becoming the very best we can be. And so with that being said, Sometimes we hold on to things that are stopping us from becoming the very best that we can be. And so one of the reasons that we hold on to different things that are not healthy for us, that are not good for us, is because of fear. We are scared that by letting go, we'll feel a certain way or we'll lose something or we won't be the same as we are now. And a lot of times being the same, staying, you know, just, you know, everything staying the same is very content. It's very normal. It's very peaceful for a lot of people. That's why people are able to find peace and chaos because it's familiar, it's normal, it's content. Everyone has a different definition. And when I say peace, you know, everyone has a different version of what their peace is as well. But I know sometimes people wonder and sit back and look at others' lives and they're like, you know, how can this individual find peace in this? And a lot of times, like I said, it's that fear of changing. It's that fear of having a different dynamic. And once we have a different dynamic, it also comes with a different responsibility. It comes with a different way that we're going to have to conduct ourselves. And so sometimes we're afraid of not necessarily letting go just because of, you know, the, 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 just for the sake of letting go. But a lot of times we're afraid because letting go is going to challenge us to have to change. And that's something that a lot of us are not ready to do. Also, another reason I mentioned on this too is we're content. We're okay with how things have been going. We may be holding on to the fear of starting our business because we're okay, we're content with working our nine to five job. We're content with how our life is going right now. And again, I'm gonna say this, you know, I, I try to say this every time I mention working a nine to five job, there is absolutely nothing wrong with working a nine to five job. There's nothing wrong with choosing how you decide to get income. Of course, as long as it's, it's uh, you know, legitimate and, and legal and, you know, it's, it's ethical. However, some of us have decided that we wanted to step away from that field or we wanted to incorporate another stream of income. And we've decided that years ago and we're still not ready to start. And it's because of the fear, not just the fear that I touched on before, but also because we're content. We don't really feel like we need to start right now. We're okay with how things are going. We may not love how things are going. We may not be jumping up for joy every single day based on how things are going, but we're ultimately okay with it. We're just content, like I mentioned before. And when you're too content with something, a lot of times it blocks the motivation from actually boosting you. It blocks that drive that a lot of us need to get excited and to uh, grab up the ambition that's inside of us to actually embark on this journey. And so another reason that a lot of us are afraid to, to let go or to get started is because lack of confidence. We may not really believe that we can do it. You know, I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast uh, examples of, you know, past failures. Sometimes we're holding on to past failures and that in return, it plays a, a trick on our subconscious mind. And we're constantly feeding ourselves negativity and we're telling ourselves, you know, we're not going to do this. Even if you start it, it's not going to work. Who's going to support you? Who's going to like your post? Who's going to buy this? Is this even a good business idea? 
We have toxic relationships. We may have people around us that really don't support us in anything that we do. Everything that we do is always going to be a negative in their eyes. And uh, not everyone's going to agree with what you say. And just because someone doesn't agree with what you want to do or what you say, it doesn't mean that they're ne you know, necessarily quote unquote negative or that they don't love you or have your best interests. But I'm referring to people that really don't have your best interests, that people, uh, people that are not able to fully love you or fully uh, support you in the way that you need to be supported when you are trying to embark on the next level of your life. And then also doubt. You know, we just may not believe, like I mentioned before, past failures can have us not believing that anything that we do will work. We may have tried to start a business before and it did not work. So now we're hung up again on the past failures and the doubt. We may have thought about different ideas and did not get the support or agreements that we were looking for. And so now we're doubting it again. We may feel like we're restrained because of income. You know, hey, I really don't have the money to start a business. And instead of us looking at different alternatives or being creative or even reaching out, maybe even via social media, making a post, asking others how they got started with minimal income um, or, or minimal budget. You know, a lot of times we just curl up and we stop. So holding on to those things can definitely damage us more than just letting go. The second point that I have is, is what you're doing healthy? So you can take that phrase and apply it to pretty much any area that it needs to be applied for specifically to you. What you're doing, is it healthy? Procrastination, you have to ask yourself, is this healthy? Now there is a such thing as being cautious about how you move, but there is another thing, there's another thin line between being cautious and being stagnant, being cautious and procrastinating being cautious and then allowing fear to control your life. And so we want to make sure that we're identifying what we're doing and if it's healthy for us as a complete individual and if it's healthy for our entrepreneurial journey. Because no matter how good of an entrepreneur you want to be, if you're not good with yourself, if you're not getting things in line with your life, it is going to be very, very challenging for you to do your best with your business. Everything is connected. Even though I do believe that if you're going through something in your personal life, there is a professionalism level that requires you to turn off some of what's going on in your personal life in order to focus and be as professional and, uh, uh, you know, professional and competent as you can with your entrepreneurial role. However, you're still the same person. So although that is the idea to be able to turn off different situations like a switch, it's still better to make sure that everything in our life is getting worked out so that we don't have as much to turn off. We don't have as much to put in the closet. We can be ourselves. We can live in our truth constantly without saying, okay, well, I'm going to deal with this later. And of course, no matter what happens, like I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, becoming your best self, organizing your life, it's a continuous journey. So there's always going to be something that's going on that you may not want to happen in your life but the things that we can control the things that we are holding on to that we have com complete like i mentioned full control over that we're just choosing not to let go of because of fear or because of contentment or because of doubt we do need to examine those and figure out what we're going to do to make sure that we're living as healthy as we possibly can so is what we're doing healthy me saying i'm going to start my business this year and then two years pass and i'm still not starting or me starting a business and then letting it go for about a year and because it didn't do what I wanted it to do, going ahead and jumping over to the next business venture and then continuing that cycle. So I'm starting something because it doesn't do what I want it to do. I'm stopping, I'm starting. And so we always find ourselves in that starting phase, but we never get to see the fruits of our labor because we stop too soon. And so, um, you know, that's something to consider. Another thing that I want to point out is what fruits are coming from it. So sometimes it may be hard to identify if what we're doing is healthy or not. And one thing that is going to be helpful in identifying uh, what needs to be in your life and what doesn't is looking at fruits. Now, I do want to say this as a disclosure. Uh, when you plant a seed, it's going to take some time to grow. It's going to take some time to grow. So this is why this statement can be a little bit confusing and challenging for some. Because if I say 
you want to make sure you look at the fruit and you just start on this journey and you're like, well, there is no fruit. So this must not be something I need to hold on to. That's not the message that I'm trying to convey. But what I'm trying to say is if you've been holding on to something, you know yourself better than anybody else. If you've been holding on to fear or if you've been holding on to toxic relationships or if you've been holding on to doubt, negative thoughts, and you're looking at your life and you're saying, you know, you're looking at your life and you're wanting to know, hey, am I just tripping? You know, am I, am I really holding on to these things? Are these things really that unhealthy to me? Take a look and see what fruits come from it. So look at the fruits of different relationships that you may be toying around with, wondering if they're toxic or not, and if they have an effect on your feelings, if they have an effect on your motivation, and also an effect on who you are as an entrepreneur. Take a look at some of your past failures and ask yourself, am I embarrassed because of this? Have I gotten over this? Am I able to work through it? Was I able to learn my lesson? Or am I allowing it to stop me and continue to keep me stagnant? Think about what you're afraid of, your fears, what you doubt about yourself and ask yourself, am I, am I speaking truth about myself? Am I looking at things in a complete way, truthful way? Am I speaking to myself who God says I am or am I allowing the world to lie and tell me that I can't do it or to lie and tell me that my ideas are stupid? What am I allowing to hold me back from being the best person and entrepreneur that I can be? And then, like I said, examine what fruit's coming from it. If you don't see any good fruit coming from your procrastination, it's time to let it go. If you don't see any good fruit coming from long, toxic relationships, it may be time to let it go. If you don't see any fruit coming from the doubt that you have about yourself or fear that you have, it may be time to let it go. If you don't see any fruits coming from being content where you are in your life, it may be time to let it go. The fourth tip that I have is how much do you value your time? So I say this very, very often. I think a lot of people get wrapped up in the fact that we get blessed with days every day. Everyone that's here, you're getting blessed with days. You got blessed with the day today, you were here yesterday, the day before, and God willing, you'll be here tomorrow. But the thing is, we want to make sure that we are valuing our time because just because we're used to waking up does not mean that that's a gift that's going to continue for eternity. You have a set amount of time on this earth. I have a set amount of time on this earth. We all do. And so in order to make sure that we're maximizing the time that we have, we have to value it. And sometimes we find ourselves not valuing our time. We don't value what we're doing in our spare time. We don't value the information that we're letting go into our mind. We don't value the people that we allow into our lives or the time that we allow people to take from our lives. We don't value a lot of things that we're doing. And then we sit back and we say, hmm, why am I still here? Why am I not progressing? Why is my business not growing? And we're not doing what's necessary to make those areas like we want them to be. And so we have to value the time that we're given. And if we're not working through some of the issues that are holding us back from actually getting started, I'm not sure how that's going to work, how we're going to actually value the time to put our time to use and actually get what it is we're wanting to work towards. There are so many entrepreneurs that I mentor that are on a continuous start phase with their businesses. They've had so many businesses and they're constantly in that loop of just starting, of just starting, of just starting. And although I recommend everyone get started, that's not where we want to continuously be. Now, I'm not saying there's you know anything wrong with starting new businesses. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with wanting to go down a different field or pivot your business. I have plenty of episodes on this podcast about that. But I'm saying that if we don't give our businesses a chance to work, if we don't give our seeds a chance to grow, if we don't stick with something long enough to actually see the outcome, how will you know if it's working or if it's not? So like I said a minute ago, we want to look at the fruits, but you have to give things some time to grow. Nothing grows overnight for the majority of us. A lot of things take time. So we have to value the time to make sure that we're constantly putting in the work. You don't want to just sit back and just wait. I started my business. I started my website. So now I'm just waiting. Part of business is a waiting game. Part of sales, you do have to wait. But another part 
is actually doing the work. It's actually getting out and networking. It's actually contacting different people that you may not know to introduce your business and yourself. It's actually being creative and finding different ideas and ways to attract people to what you're doing. It's making sure that you can create different plans and different um, strategies so that your business will continue to move in the direction that you want it to be. It's making sure that you stay on top of products. It's making sure that you continuously post if you're on social media. It's making sure that you are looking at how your website is optimized. It's making sure that you're looking at the website count, the visitor count, that you're uh, communicating with different clients and uh, potential customers. It's, it's, a, it's a work. Even if you don't have any clients today, there's still work. So that's what I mean when I say, are we valuing our time or are we just letting time pass us by? Are we deciding to not work on our business because for the whole month, we've just decided to binge watch TV, which again, you know, I'm guilty of been watching TV, binge watching TV, excuse me, sometimes, but I'm guilty of doing, you know, other activities when I could have been doing uh, work for my business. And I'm not saying that you have to constantly work. That's it with no play. But I am saying that sometimes, you know, there comes a point where you have to get serious and you have to decide and sacrifice. Okay, well, I've, I've done this enough. So now it's time for me to buckle down. Okay, so I've put this off. So now it's time for me to buckle down. I've put this on the back burner for about a month. Now it's time for me to get serious. So how do you value your time? That has a huge correlation in the effect of the productivity of yourself and also your business. The last thing that I want to go over is recognizing your worth and your inner strength. So a lot of times when I mentioned in the beginning of the podcast, entrepreneurs sometimes feel content with their lives and they feel like there's no reason to really get started or no motivation or ambition to really provoke them or encourage them to want to get started with their business or continue with their business or do what it needs, what they need to do to become the best person they can be because they're okay with who they are. They're okay with how their life is going. Again, being okay doesn't mean that they're excited or happy with it, but they're okay with it. It's a livable condition for them. But once we recognize what we're worth and once we recognize whose we are and we know that, you know, hey, I don't have to settle for this, a lot of things change. When I recognized that I didn't have to work a nine to five if I didn't choose to, a lot of things changed with my mentality and my life. And it wasn't because, you know, I just wanted the ability to say, hey, I don't have to work a job. But it was the fact of me being able to be at home with my children, me being able to use my creativity, me being able to do what it is I actually love, me being able to uh, even trust God more, knowing that what I thought was my reality does not have to be the cap of it. So I went to work every day because I thought that was my reality. I thought that's what I had to do. And at that point, that was my reality. But I was thinking that that was going to be my reality until I retired. And I didn't, you know, really, really get serious about starting a business until I decided to believe that it could work. And even then, I started and I stopped. And then when I came back, I said, you know what? This is something I'm not going to stop again. I'm going to continue to go full force with it. But the point is, I didn't recognize my worth. I didn't recognize how much creativity I had. I didn't recognize the ability that I had to have options as to how I wanted to get income for my children and I. I think back now and you know where I'm at now is where I've always wanted to be. Do I still want to aspire to gain more? Yes. Am I just content to the point that I'm not gonna work any harder? No, but I am grateful for where I'm at because I remember the days when I would have to find childcare and I struggle with that. Remember the days when I didn't want to go to work because I missed out on different school events and school functions with my children, and I don't have to worry about that anymore. I remember the days where I was just completely weak and just, um, you know, not feeling well under the weather, and I still had to get up and go to work because I needed to make sure that the bills were going to be paid and that we had food on our table, and I don't have to do that anymore. I have other ways of receiving income where I can sit in the comfort of my home, so I am so grateful for that. I am so grateful for that. So recognizing your worth, you are worth more than the cap that a lot of times we put on ourselves. You don't have to settle for anything in life. That's in relationships. That's in your uh, job. That's with your business. Even with our businesses, sometimes we get content with how our businesses are going and we stop striving for more. 
you don't have to settle. Whatever you want your life to be, however you want to receive income, it is a, it's, it's possible. It is an achievable dream, but it depends on how well you're going to value your time, know your worth, what you're holding on to, what you're willing to let go of in order to gain, and how well you're, you're able to adapt to becoming a better person each day. And also your inner strength. A lot of times we're stronger than what we think. And so sometimes we hold on to different things that we shouldn't be holding on to that are keeping us behind. And we don't realize that we're actually stronger than what we're giving ourselves credit for. We actually realize that, hey, we didn't need this toxic relationship. Or, hey, we didn't need to have these doubtful thoughts. A lot of them weren't true. Hey, we didn't need to hold on to past failures because once we started examining the quote unquote failure, we realized that, wow, this was the huge lesson and turning point that I needed in my entrepreneurial career. Career, If I never opened my salon and closed my salon, I would not have learned as much as I know today. If I have not stuck with my business as long as I have, I would not know half of the things that I know today. I would have, wouldn't have met half of the people that I met today. If I allowed fear to stop me from public speaking or fear to stop me from communicating and meeting new people in regards to my business, I would not have the communication skills that I have grown to have today. So a lot of times, like I said, we are stronger than we give ourselves credit for. We are more talented than we see sometimes. We are more creative <laughs> than we allow our, our imagination to uh, take credit for. So with all of that being said, I want to remind all of us that sometimes, like the quote says, holding on to baggage hurts us more than letting it go. And although it may seem content, although it may seem normal, although it may seem like, hey, I've tried to let go before and I just didn't feel well, allow yourself to go through the motions of letting go in order to grow to your full potential. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, not saying that it's something that we're going to want to do, but it's something that's necessary for every individual that is achieving and striving to be the best that they can possibly be. And in return, wanting to become the best entrepreneur for their business and for others out there. So I really hope that this podcast episode resonated with someone out there. I really hope that it helped. Like always, I don't want the podcast to end. If you do want to be a guest on the Brittany Bundles podcast, please email me. My email address is the letter B talks, T-A-L-K-S at yahoo.com. I'm also on Instagram at Brittany underscore bundles. That is Brittany, B-R-I-T-T-N-E-Y underscore bundles, B-U-N-D-L-E-S. I'm on Facebook, Brittany Bundles, YouTube, Brittany Bundles, and Twitter, Brittany Bundles. Until next time, I'll talk to you all in the next podcast episode. Oh, my God.